Michael, your first starring role, Back to the Future, were you surprised by the impact the film had had? Yeah, I, I, I was surprised. Um, well, I, I expected the film to do well. And when I say do well, I mean, you know, make a profit or whatever uh, would satisfy the studios um, all because of the people associated with it, Stephen and, and whatnot. But for it to come out and do as well as it did, I mean, I, I, mean, I don't even look at the totals anymore. It, it's, it's scary. Um, Breathtaking they are. It is. It's frightening. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad I don't have to add it up. And, and <laughs> I'm almost as glad I don't have to add it up as I am sorry that I don't get to keep it. You know. I bet. It kind of made too much difference to your own personal fame because you're very well known in America with your TV series, Family Ties, aren't you? Right. Well, it's funny. It, it has a. Uh, I, I, it amazes me because a, a television show, when uh, when it's popular, uh, is seen by I don't know 50 million people or whatever a week. Uh, a, a greater number of people than we'll ever see most movies. I mean, I, I think that more people see Family Ties in a night than see Jaws, will, will or have seen Jaws. Our producer told me that once. So you, don't, you wouldn't expect it to make that much difference, yet when you come out with a film like Back to the Future, all of a sudden it just quadruples the amount of attention you get. And I, I don't really understand it, but I, I, I can't honestly say that I, I don't like it. Now, you replaced Eric Stoltz eventually in the in the role of Marty McFly. How did you feel about that? I mean, presumably you were quite pleased to get the part. Well, I, I had a lot of feelings. I had, I had real mixed emotions about it. It It is, in my way of thinking, the actor's nightmare to to start a project and and, and um, for something to happen and, and to have to leave it what, uh, under whatever circumstance. I wouldn't want that to happen to me. Um, but from as I talked to Stephen and Bob Zemeckis and whatnot, I found it was a very mutual thing, and and they were very compassionate and very understanding in the way that they dealt with him. And and when I understood that after talking to them, they weren't saying, well, you know, dump this guy and you'll come in or whatever. It was just they they they, they, were, they spoke very highly of Eric, and that impressed me, and that made it an, an easier uh, 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 thing for me to step into. What do you think of um, Steven Spielberg now? Like he's great. I named one wing of my house after him. <laughs> no, I, he needs uh, that. <laughs> yeah. No, I. He. he um, uh, I think he's a. He's a terrific man, a terrific filmmaker, and, and he is. Uh, one thing, the thing that strikes you most about him is uh, being in, in his situation. He could be a, a Louis B. Mayer or a whatever the, the, the stereotypical mogul or whatever. He's not. He's, he's, he's an artist and a filmmaker and a, and a man who likes to be surrounded with creative people, uh, Bob Zemeckis, people like that, and give them the room to exercise their own creativity. And um, so he's not, he's not to make films for a buck second and to treat people um, uh, accordingly. You had one hell of a workload when you were making this film, didn't you? Because you were making TV series at the same time. Right. How do you cope with that? Uh, well, it was it was tough doing doing both at the same time. But on the on the other hand, um, I kind of when you take a challenge, when you take on something, you say you're going to do it, you, you have to do it. Yeah. And 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 in the course of doing it, sitting back and saying, oh, geez, boy, this I'm I'm tired, I'm bush. It's not going to do you a whole lot of good. Um, second of all, when you, when you when you have a job that you love, you know, um, you show up for work and you're excited about doing it. And, and getting on with the business of doing it. And with me, that just happened twice a day. You know, it happened in, in the morning, and then it happened at night. Did you sleep? Uh, a little bit. I slept uh, about four or five hours a night. Um, and I'd have drivers come pick me up in the morning and bring me in at night. Sometimes they'd carry me in and dump me on my bed at night. Um, so there were a lot of people who made life easy for me and, and went out of their way to be, uh, to be understanding you know, during that time. Well, finally, Michael, here we are at this royal premiere. A huge, great crowd standing behind us now as we yeah, talk. I'm not nervous at all. What do you, what do you make of, of, a, of a, an occasion like this? It's, it's wonderfully exciting. I mean, it's, uh, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Uh, if, if, if indeed it is only once-in-a-lifetime for me, I'll, I'll, I'll die satisfied.